Okay, we're going to have a little conversation here about, <clears throat> it stems from uh, uh, everybody having to deal with the rules and regulations on permitting and how permitting has kind of gotten out of hand in terms of anybody being able to do anything other than conventional thinking. And uh, the way I look at it in my head is uh, uh, kind of what I have to tell myself to be able to understand what's going on. I mean, you got a world out here with lots of people, but, you know, not too many people. And so we're looking at uh, these people on the planet, uh, you know, back in the early days of uh, this country, let's say. You know, there were, there were people scattered out, but not so much. And, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, somebody um, had a stove in their log cabin and didn't do the stovepipe right and it burnt down their log cabin, you know, and X one, one person there. But um, it, it burns down their cabin. So as the, the country starts being something other than a wilderness with a few people in it, uh, we did have what we uh, would call, I guess, uh, we had some guidance or rules or laws, if you will, uh, happening. So we're, we're looking at sort of some, some structure started happening, and we call that laws. <clears throat> you know, I guess we can just... And, and you... People were made safer by these laws. These laws actually started as a good thing. <clears throat> so now you're kind of in a, a structure, parameters, let's call it, of, of laws. And so some of the early, early ones might have been, uh, well, if you're going to build a log cabin and, and then you, you must have a proper design or whatever for your chimney so you don't burn your log cabin down and and burn a forest down with it and so on. So it's kind of like, a, a way I look at it is it's kind of like uh, rain, for instance, rain. Um, a little bit of rain, you know, or a decent amount of rain makes your plants grow. Uh, rain's a good thing. So a few laws and regulations were a good thing. Now, rain can come, you know, every day, six inches a day for three or four days, and all of a sudden you've got floods, you've got, you've got people dying, you've got a mess, uh, and so too much rain is not a good thing. See, so, so some rain is very good, makes your plants grow, uh, uh, makes you have water to drink, uh, makes ponds and lakes for fish and so on. But tremendous amounts of rain can really be a problem and cause death. So I'm seeing that, that the, the law situation is that same way. A, a few laws can, can help people. You know, uh, maybe another one is you can't kill anybody. Okay, that's a reasonable law to have. But as things keep happening, why we get more laws and you know our structure becomes a little tighter but it's it's not so bad you know uh, but as this is over 200 years see of of uh, just this country for instance but it applies to every country just like rain applies to every country um, as somebody else had a problem with something they made another law and so you got more laws, structuring, guiding, and really uh, at some point beginning to inhibit people. Um, and so it gets like this. And then we've got quite a few laws and regulations, uh, you know, keeping these people from making mistakes or breaking the law, so to speak. But it just keeps happening. And over 200 years, it has kept happening. 
So in any one given urban area, I mean, there are almost endless laws and regulations. And I say this because we're in the building business here, and they just are coming up with more. Like, like on the solar panel applications, we used to just put solar panels on the, bill, on the buildings and not have to uh, worry about the rural electric service. And so we put solar panels on and, and we've got buildings that are off the grid. Well now, a latest thing in New Mexico is you have to have a permit for your solar panels. And you have to meet all kinds of criteria for them. And they have gotten that to the point where I'm in the business. I have been doing this for decades. You know, I was doing solar panels 50 years ago. Well, now I have to get a permit for solar panels on an Earthship. And it, it's, it's kind of bogus what they're asking for. And they are understaffed. And it takes a long time to get the permit. The bottom, and it's expensive. Some people are paying $1,000 just to get somebody else to do it for them. The point being that, that these permits are, new solar permits are, are inhibiting people from going solar because that's another thousand dollars and another permit. And I mean, I'm in the business and I don't even know how to fill out for this permit. It's just, I have to get a solar technician to fill out for this permit just so I can screw some panels onto my building, run some wires to my batteries and in get my inverter. I mean, I used to do this myself. And of course, the equipment has gotten more and more complicated. So yeah, we need a technician to install it for us. But now the technician has to go through this permit process that is made. The permit, this is showing me how laws have happened. The permit is done by people down at the legislature that maybe get a consultant in, but to, to guide them, because the legislators do not know anything about solar, I find out that the legislators don't know much about anything. They just make laws about things and get lobbied by people and so on. So, so I have seen that just in recent months that yet even more permitting is needed to build an earthship, the solar panel permit. And I think that's the way it is in most states. Uh, so now look at what we've got, you know, and it keeps going. I mean, we are continuing to make a grid, a network, a, a, a corral, a, uh, just a structure of laws that just keep evolving. Keep, not, I wouldn't call it evolution. They just keep happening. Something happens and they make another law. Something new happens and they make another law. And so where we're at now is like too much rain. We're dying here. We're drowning here from too much rain, too many laws. Too many laws are stopping. Too many regulations are stopping evolution. I see that. I have seen it. And finally, in the last oh, six months or so, I, I put this diagram together in my head because this is what I'm seeing. I am seeing that we are constantly adding to the laws and regulations uh, through nobody's fault. It's just the way the cookie crumbles with humans, I guess. But we have, just like you have a little bit of rain or a decent amount of rain is a very good thing, and a ton of rain and, and uh, six inches every hour for 10 hours is devastating. Well, a few laws back in the old days were good, and now today they are devastating. That's what is keeping us as a people from evolving and moving into more uh, evolution, let's say, that is going to take us through the future. You can't do it. I mean, if you do, it's a, it's a royal pain in the ass to try to come up with a new idea and get it used and use it yourself even. I tried the law, uh, introduced a law to kind of, you know, make little pockets here that uh, I call it the Sustainable Testing Site Act. I said, okay, no laws apply in this little zone. 
I took it to the state legislature, legislator, uh, uh, legislation, uh, lawmaking um, program, and they uh, for four years I worked on it, and finally they passed it. They made the New Mexico Sustainable Testing Site Act. I I made I based it on the premise that. Uh, uh, you know, they, New Mexico is the state where they blew apart, uh, blew apart 10,000 acres for testing the atomic bomb, for testing uh, units of uh, mass destruction. Well, I was saying, well, why can't here in New Mexico we test sustainable living, no holds barred, so that we can find out ways to, to, be, to live outside of all these laws that keep us from evolving. That's my point. These laws and rules and regulations keep us from evolving. So I, I, I made this law. It got uh, the governor, Bill Richardson, signed it, and it did give us this little sustainable testing site, but then it had to be renewed, and the next regime didn't want to renew it, and uh, uh, so it, 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 it became a law that lawyers managed to overpower, because that's what lawyers do. Lawyers are well-versed at, at doing this, or sneaking out of it, you know, or whatever. That's what, uh, the law is an amazing thing. It's like, I've got not much respect for it, if you want to know the truth, because I see laws made that choke people. Enough laws are made that they sit, they literally choke people on evolution, and then they got trained people, lawyers, trained lawyers, who are able to manipulate it and twist it and find various ways to get around it. That's what lawyers do. So the law is only for the lawyers, and then you have to pay lawyers a fortune. And so the, the whole concept has simply, it's no one's fault, but the whole concept has simply gotten out of hand. Just like rain out here, if it rains right now, it's going to be nice for the plants out there. But if it rains six inches every hour for the next two days, rain is a bad thing. So rain is a good thing, rain is a bad thing. Laws are a good thing, our laws are a bad thing. We are, we have gone too far into laws that we have no longer got the freedom to evolve. And this is a desperate situation because we need to almost turn it completely inside out in terms of how we live on this planet. And the laws won't let us, the convention won't let us, the tradition won't let us. I've said many times, tradition and convention are are great, make great coffee table books. But for us to stay alive in the future, we need to break out of convention. We need to break out of tradition. We need to break out of the law. We have to learn to, to develop new ways to exist on this planet. And you can't do that when you can't even do anything, when you can't build something that's a test, when you can't try out something. And we're changing whole concepts here with the Earthship concept. And so we're changing the concepts of electricity, the concepts of sewage, the concepts of water, the concepts of heating, the concepts of garbage. And so we're, we're vastly changing things and, and finding that this is what we're faced with. And so I'm not saying I have the uh, solution to this. I am pointing it out so that we can, we can struggle with this and get uh, fight our way out of this. I use the technique of transcend. I try to transcend it at this point, and the the you know I try to give the laws what they want and conceal what we want within it. Uh, so I I I, I don't uh, you know I'm acting like a lawyer does. I'm uh, and, and 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 a good example of that is that, uh, you know, a, a little uh, analogy is that you have a dog that's got worms, you, you want to give it a worm pill, and the vet tells you uh, to put the worm pill in the dog's throat and massage its throat, and you'll cause the dog to swallow the pill. Well, it bites you, it, it vomits the pill back up, it spits the pill back up, it, it, it doesn't work. Very few times have I ever seen that work. But if you take that pill, wad it up in a ball of hamburger, throw it at the dog, the dog eats it, woofs it right down, pill and all. So what I'm saying is the lawmakers, the enforcers of the law, I give them the hamburger that they want and I hide my pill inside of it. 
That's what I would call transcending this. It's a shame that we have to go to these extents to be within the law. And the only reason we want to be within the law is because they put you in jail or fine you if you don't. So we are faced on this planet in the developed world with too much rain. Thank you. On our planet Earth, we need vessels that will take care of our needs. These needs are comfortable shelter that doesn't use fossil fuel, water, electricity, food, human waste, and garbage need to be taken care of by encountering the phenomena of the Earth. Earthships are these vessels. Uh, what the academy does is, is teach its students how everything comes together to create sort of a home that's a living environment rather than just a structure that you live in.